Hello everyone, welcome back to this next episode, episode number 8 on the UC4H rangefinder. And there are several rangefinders on the market, um, but uh, in my opinion only this one is really uh, reasonable for us. It's the Beneveke uh, TF Mini and rangefinders are expensive and this one here is not too expensive, so it's it's expensive but it's affordable and it also has a reasonable range of operation for us so I, I really like this a lot and um, its output here is originally it's it's yours so it's a serial output so what we need is a translation from the serial output to the CAN bus and you can do this in two ways one way is that you use again the UART tunnel so the as I've uh, discussed that for, for, for example, for the GPS unit. So, and this is working great, but I've also designed my own uh, yeah, range finder message. I call it distance uh, for reasons I will uh, show you uh, a bit later. Now, in order to build this thing, you again have two options. Uh, first, uh, as nearly always, you can use this general purpose UC4H node. So you just connect it here to the seal pins and well, when you are gone, uh, done and here you have your CAN bus and then you flash the proper firmware and things are going to work. The second option is that you use this uh, dedicated adapter board which I've made. So that's a little cute board. It's basically the same thing here again, the same thing just in a better uh, form factor. And you see that, it's, that it fits directly onto the bottom of this uh, range finder here and gives you such a cute little uh, device here. When you look at this, you can see that there are not only the CAN bus wires coming out, but there's also this extra wire. And the reason for that is that this range finder really requires a lot of power. So it needs to be connected to a good power source. And therefore, you don't want to power it from the output of your flight controller because the power output here might be too weak. And therefore there's this dual option, namely that you can connect the CAN bus to your flight controller. And in this case, uh, only the microcontroller here is powered and not the rangefinder itself. And this, uh, this makes it possible that the Ardu pilot can find your uh, node and you can configure it and so on and so forth. But if you want to power it, you really need to ensure that you give it enough power so you connect it directly to your power brick. And therefore there is this CAN bus, this CAN bus voltage option and then here is uh, extra power option. However, in our UC4H, uh, all UC4H copter build, as I've explained previously, we will power all UV CAN nodes from the power brick. So therefore the power on this red wire here and on this wire will be the same. So in our case, this, this uh, dual power option is not needed. Um, I'd like to mention that there's another range finder available, uh, which is very cheap. It's this uh, VL53L1X type of range finders. And it's, I've also made a little PCB for that. So it's really a little cute type thing here. However, this rangefinder is not working well outdoors, so you can't use it outdoors. It's excellent to be used indoors, but not outdoors. And therefore, uh, yes, we are not going to use it for our all UC4H copter. But this thing here is really fantastic. So let's talk about the UAV CAN messages. And in principle, there are three options. So there is a message in the standard um, message set. It's called range sensor measurement and you can see immediately that it has a lot of uh, data fields. Then there is the tunnel broadcast message, that is the, it's the UART tunnel option and then I've also created my own message. Now when you use this range finder here and because it has a serial output, the first obvious option of course would be to just use the UART tunnel, that is this, mes uh, this message here. And I'd like to mention that there is a very nice blog uh, of Patrick Poirier and Ardu Pilot Discuss, where he, he is discussing using the UART tunnels and the range finders here uh, in, in, much, uh, in some detail. So you're welcome to uh, look up his uh, blog post. 
So this is uh, the first uh, obvious idea to use. Now, um, when there is this message, however, I'm not supporting it, but have done my own message. And there's a simple reason for that. Namely, when you look at the amount of data which is transported for one data point. So in this distance, distance mes uh, message, it's four bytes. When you use the tunnel, it's 11 bytes. And when you use the standard uh, message, it's 17 bytes. And now what you need to consider is that this range finder here can emit at 100 hertz. And you also might have many more of them. So you might want to have up to 10 for, of them, for example, because uh, Autopilot that's object uh, avoidance has eight sectors, then up and down. So this makes 10, uh, 10 sensors. Uh, so you might want to count the traffic on your CAN bus. And when you do that for the range sensor measurement message, uh, you have 100 hertz, 10 of them. When you see that you have a traffic of 39% uh, of the bandwidth on your theoretical bandwidth of your CAN bus. So you're really having a lot of traffic just due to the range finders. And when you use the tunnel, your tunnels, it's 26%. But when you use the distance message, it's just 14%. And this, for example, can become relevant when you want to use such range finders. I have, for example, a project which I call the spider eye. Uh, so you can see that there are up to there are, yeah, six of them on here. And you might want to have more of them to get really a good coverage of your uh, for object avoidance and so on and so forth. For this project here, for this all you see for H uh, copter. It doesn't really matter because we install one of them and uh, that's all. And in fact, you might actually wonder why you not, why not just connecting it to the serial port. And one has to say this honestly, that if you just want to use one uh, range finder and you have all the other thing on the CAN buses, so you have plenty of free UART ports, serial ports. So there's really no reason not to just connect it to the CL port and go along. Uh, so it's it's a choice. But I mean, we want to build an all UC4H copter, and therefore we also put uh, the range finder on the CAN bus. So we can go on and discuss the configuration of the node. For that purpose, I've connected the, the, the range finder to the SL CAN adapter. And here are the parameters. And the, usually you don't have to do anything. I mean, you can see that there are the, the UART uh, parameters, which would do the UART uh, tunnel, but we are not going to use that. So what is relevant for us is just, okay, the rate is set as 10. So we ha will have a 100 Hertz output. And then what is relevant is here the range pitch and the range yaw and the sub ID. And uh, yeah, the, the sub ID we can set to any value we want. I've set it to one here, so it uh, doesn't matter at the moment. Um, but uh, we will have a range finder which is down facing. So therefore the pitch we should set to minus 90 degree and the yaw will be to zero because I mean, you just pitch it down. So yaw will be zero. So these are already the default values. So normally you should not have to do anything. But uh, these are the two relevant or the relevant values to identify your range finder. So the range sensor type should be zero, which tells that this is the T, uh, TF mini. Or it could actually, it's auto. So it tries to identify which sensor is installed. So the TF mini would be one if you set this value to zero when, you, when it uh, tries to auto detect it. Okay, and the other values we, 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 we don't use here. So if you want to use the tunnel mode instead, then you would have to set the range rate to zero. So the fact that it's set to 10 tells the firmware that you want to use uh, the UC4H distance message. Yes, and the next thing to do is the configuration in ArduPilot. So I've uh, mounted the range finder to the copter using my most favorite mounting style, namely double-sided tape. So it's on, on the bottom here, then of course connected to the CAN bus. And what I do now is just power it up. You know this. And uh, connect of course the USB port. So that we can connect to Mission Planner. 
you hear the beeping, so we are ready to connect. Yeah, as regards of the parameters, since we're going to use the distance message, the configuration is relatively simple. We go to the range finder set uh, range, uh, parameters. Where are they here? And we are going to use range finder number one. So we open it. And as type here, we enter 83. Okay. So we have 83. So this already has enabled it. Then all the other parameters are not very relevant. Um, there's the orientation here. And it's set to 25, which means that it's the down-facing rangefinder. So that's the default, and you also can leave it as the default. Um, then there are the, the min, min and max values. The max value is roughly OK. Um, but the minimum value I usually set to 30 centimeters because the rangefinder with a Chief Mini is not very reliable below that, doesn't really work below that. So I use here 30 centimeters. And since we had the sub uh, node ID set to value one, we also have to set the range finder address to one. So you see that's how it's identified in our node. We configured, and um, then we go back to here, we configured sensor sub ID to one. We had this 90, 90 and this zero. So this gives the orientation 25 and the sensor sub ID was one which in um, mission planner would be range finder uh, address number one. So you can choose the default value of zero if you want, if also in the node you would have set it to zero. So this is just uh, for the sake of fun, so to say. Okay, so these are the parameter changes which you need to do. We write, okay, and then we reboot. And now we have to wait with a few seconds again. Okay, so we can connect. And now let's see what better copter is giving us for information here. So the GPS is found, the compasses are found. And now you find this entry range finder. So range finder number one, it's the one which we had used. It tells you that it's, uh, it's using the UC4H messages, that we are on node ID 53, that the uh, pitch is set to minus 90, yaw is set to zero, with, which gives the orientation 25, and then the sub ID is one. So this range finder has been found and it can be used now. It's ready to use. So we can open this panel here. So you're looking for uh, the zona range uh, value. So it's somewhere down here, zona range. So we have uh, we have it here. And now I will just move the copter a bit up and down so that you can see that this is indeed working. So I lift it and voila, this is indeed working. So I put it down again a bit. Okay, so up again, down again, and so on and so forth. So this is working now. And that's all what you have to do to make it usable. I want to show you also quickly uh, Oh, this was the wrong thing. A lock. So we go to uh, here and here maybe. When we open maybe this one here. So what you see here, there is a field range finder now in your lock. So you open it and it gives you, for example, the distance one. And this is for this particular measurement, uh, for this particular flight, uh, it, it's the uh, Distance. I mean, it's interesting to compare that to the barometer output. So I just take one of them. That's the altitude of the barometer. Uh, so you see that the range finder really uh, has no drift in height and so on and so forth. And this is really excellent when you do hovering above the ground and for landing and takeoff. Yes, this was everything. Thanks for watching and have fun, guys.